a very good morning to all of you this is sandhya kode from anand cdu flighty hyderabad now one of the things that we talk about in this call so i'd like to just start by saying that my journey in engineering began a long time ago and i spent over 25 years in the industry and when i started off in industry i was actually hiring lots of freshers and i realized that they were not ready to deliver what was needed in the industry and this was a long time ago and the fact remains the same even today for the most part so a lot of colleges like yourselves are doing many things one of the key things that we find are when i ask a question of an individual can you tell me about this concept how is this is used i get this response sorry ma'am i studied that three years ago so i don't remember it how many of you students are in the same boat so those of you that are operating the chat just take a poll by having your students do a hand raise if they would answer the same way so this is the problem now how many of you feel that as soon as you graduate it doesn't matter what real life problem you are given you just jump and you can do it so this is the problem that we have faced and in the last 5 years some of the figures are number of engineering colleges in india are growing of course today's news is that several are shutting down and this is the problem because when the numbers grow you don't get quality because there are not enough teachers to go around and then nascom this wonderful body says only 10% are employable 90% are unemployable so this is the problem it's not saying that 90% are not getting jobs it's an interesting word unemployable means you may get placed but you cannot deliver on the job that's a serious problem when will you be able to deliver on the job only when you understand your concept you know when to apply what things to a real life situation and connect the concept to the real life problem where do you learn that in your regular courses or do you even learn that if not there is a problem so these are the gaps that are actually observed and has been reported by industry and observed by myself as well so mapping real world problems to program adapting to new technologies why is adapting to new technologies important today you may learn one technology let's say java or something and then tomorrow it's dot net or it's yet another something which hasn't been discovered today will you say no sorry i did not learn that what do you say is the question we want the students of today to be able to not only 
deliver on the job today in the first job but also be ready to deliver on the last so you have a huge career of about 50 years ahead of you and because people are working way up to when they are 70 these days right? so you have a career when you do are you able to deliver are you able to learn again continue to learn so as technology is made and this is the question and are you able to communicate effectively on the job this is very very key to bridge this gap so what we have done here in these past five years that I have run this program for enhancing quality of IT education in engineering colleges and this goes for all branches because IT is a horizontal needed by every single domain it doesn't matter whether you are not a computer scientist or an IT person you are a mechanical engineer civil engineer electrical engineer electronics engineer biotechnical engineer, no matter what it is that you are, you will need to have to you know certain basics of IT appears. That is what we have covered in this certificate. And how we've done this? We've done this in a learning by doing curriculum. So to attain practical knowledge, project centered curriculum. The whole idea is that people are trying to solve real world problems. So suppose I were to say, imagine you are in Google, you are a software engineer, now design a search engine. And through that process of designing a search engine, you end up learning data structure. Would that be exciting? That's one of the kinds of things that we get to do. Yeah. Learn to learn. When you sort of do this learning by doing methodology, it's very different than learning by listening to lecture. What happens when lectures are done? Your teacher is the one that's talking a lot. Students are listening and after some time are you listening or have you stopped listening that's the question you have to ask yourself okay there are studies research studies that show that in a lecture the brain activity gets to be pretty low this is studies done at MIT in the US So again, soft skills to communicate better. So this is all very critical. This is how we are doing it. Learning by doing, learn to learn, and soft skills. So a student who would have done, let's say, object-oriented using Java, in learning by doing fashion, it says, oh, doesn't matter. Give me any other technology. I can pick it up in a few weeks. I did this pretty much by myself. I'll be able to do it. So that's the kind of thing industry is looking for. Ask the question, how many of you can swim and how do we learn swimming? Do we follow an instruction booklet? Well, if that's what you're thinking and saying, then surely this is the instruction booklet, right? Of course, you're going to learn swimming after reading this, right? Visualize the line running down the center of your body from your chin to your chest. This line is the axis upon which your whole body should pivot and it should extend horizontally in the direction you're swimming. Technically correct. But is that going to work? No. You're right. It won't. Okay. Read on one side by turning your head on that side as the arm comes out. You're just going to get in the water, just flap your hands and legs and then 
try and make some progress and after all that you will learn but you will learn in your own way but the way you learn is by doing that's what it is. this is the critical part when you do something it stays with you because you understand it there was a saying by Confucius I hear I forget I see remember I do, I understand. So what's the best way to learn? Well, you got it by doing. So this is what we do, learning by doing. It's not a new concept, right? It's been around for ages. But this is what we are doing, is taking this idea and mapping real world problems okay. so that you can actually solve these real world problems through this learning by doing approach. Let's look at this interesting creature. What's that? Is it a dinosaur? Now why did they perish? They're not around anymore, right? Why did they die? They were not able to adapt. So, do we want to be a dinosaur? I hope not, because then pretty soon you're going to perish. Let me tell you that when I went, did my engineering more than three decades ago, I studied about vacuum tubes. How many of you even know that such a thing existed? Well, they did. Then we did solid state electronics, and then came the ICs, and then came system on a chip, and so much more technologies. You know, the whole operating system, the concept of the big digital computers, which needed to be housed in huge air conditioned rooms, and then comes the workstations, and then the PCs, and now the tablets, and the mobiles, and you get to do chat, and Facebook, and everything else, the so social networking. So there's a whole lot of technologies that are coming your way. Are you able to adapt and use it? How many of you are on Facebook? Well, a lot of you are, right? So that's great. The question is, are you able to be in that kind of a social environment for learning as well? And if you are, you're going to make movement in major chunks. And that's what you need to do. So, technology is running at a great pace. Education is struggling to keep up. And that's the problem. Because the education that we have in our systems of higher education in our colleges haven't changed for over a hundred years. And this is not just true of colleges here. Everywhere this is happening. And this is the revolution that's happening today and you get to be part of it. And then what about soft skills? Teamwork, communication skills, listening skills. Are you able to do these things effectively when you are studying? Think about it. If you're not, if you're only concentrating on getting good marks, and only you should get the good marks, not your friends, then whether you're ready for teamwork is also a question. Let's talk about the approach that we have used in doing this model. So, in each of your colleges, there have been several teachers who have undergone this very, very grueling learning by doing approach. Now, when teachers undergo training for eight weeks full time, you can imagine that this is serious. Right? Well, let me tell you, my dear friends, 
that in each of your institutes, your teachers, some of them, have gone through this and they have understood that now they are doing learning by doing and they go from lecture based to method approach. So if you ask a question, they will not give you the answer. By the way, or not even directly. They may give you a hint to get you get to the answer. And is that a good thing to do? Imagine if somebody, you asked, had a question, your teacher gave you the answer right away. Would you be learning? Or are you just storing off that piece as a piece of information somewhere? The other hand, if you explored and learned the concept yourself, are you more likely for it to stay with you? Well, you got it. And that's what you want to do. There's also the whole wide world of e-learning. Today, there are a whole bunch of open education resources out there. You should be using them, right? I hope you are. E-learning is for completely, if you are self-motivated, you can do it. You can go over there and learn a whole lot of stuff. Lecture base is what has been happening. And I think this has been my observation. If it's not true for a few of you, all the better. But a lot of spoon feeding goes on the lecture. It's been continuing from the intermediate into the colleges because the students are wanting it. They're asking for it and the teachers are giving it. And this is not a good way to learn. Then what do you have to do? So here, these teachers who got trained, the way they work is each mentor has 10 trainees, students assigned. He or she recognizes the potential in each of the students, gives personal attempt. So if you have a question trying to do the task, then you get help, but not the answer. Help, hint, so that you can get to the answer yourself. So this is what we've created, the Student Enhancement Program. And many people have gone through this. So over 500 teachers have been trained in over 70 colleges in this uh, teacher training program. And they have gone back to their colleges and trained over 5,000 students now. And many of these people have got trained when they're in their second year and some of them in their third year. And several of the people that have graduated after doing these have really been doing wonderfully. So they get to solve the real world problems. They learn and they share this step is much, much closer to the industry because you learn in this way and that's the kind of leadership that the industry gets. So what are we covering in the course content? It's computational thinking, which is basically logic. Some of the feedback that we have from placement uh, teachers and faculty from your own colleges is that many industry feedback is that students are weak in the fundamentals, their logic is stuff. So this is a response to that. Object-oriented programming through so Java and data structures. So these may look familiar, and they are, because you may have something like this in your curriculum, but you do it differently, and it's done learning by doing. That's what it is. So how does it work? Each course will have a set of modules, module set of tasks, and there's a quiz evaluation at each module and assessment at the end of the course. 
in the beginning you may find I have to do some work myself but then guess what you will get into a methodology that will help you in the longer term the sooner you get started with that the better we recommend even the first years taking computational things this is kind of how it goes so you will have uh, once you register for the program and you can register for just the computational thinking and the Java basics or the advanced and data structures, all four of them put together is a certificate tonight. This is how a scene will look like. Then you're supposed to do a task and then you get to do certain flow charting and you actually get it to be evaluating as you do your logic. So that's exciting because you get the response. To do more tasks. This is how it's offered. Phase one and phase two constitute the certificate in IT, and the phase three is a data structures project, much like the Google search engine I talked about. And the good news with this whole approach is that, you know, just like in Facebook, you do a collaborative learning, you are in discussion forums, all the students in different colleges are connecting with the colleges, and there's a community mentorship. There's also a recognition that you are able to do these different things. And in data structures, you get to do fun, real-life problems, right? how to build a web calculator, or if you really are serious, how to build a search engine. These are the kinds of things you get to do. And when you start doing this, your interest in learning even other subjects, this is what we've observed. And both steps, what will happen? You get to map real life problems to programs, adapt to new technologies, and effectively communicate on the job. And let me tell you, after 25 years of, you know, running industries, setting up, and I was also, when I did the Motorola Software Center, setting it up from scratch in Hyderabad, growing it from zero to 150 people. I had not just inexperienced people, I also had lots of experienced people. But I can tell you that until they go through these three key principles, they too were not able to communicate effectively in the job. I had to literally put them through a training program for the same. Communication is really not about English at all. You may have wonderful, grammatically correct English. But if you do not know how and when to communicate on the job, when you have a question, if you can't stand up and say, I have a question, I need help, or this specification doesn't look right, can we discuss it? That's the kind of thing that you need to be able to do. Are you ready for it? This is what we're talking about. Going through CIT helps you with that because you get to do real stuff, you get to be on the forum, you get to talk to other students that are doing it, you get help from mentors, not just mentors from your own college, but mentors with IIIT, mentors with NMCDU, and other mentors that are there in the other colleges as well. And that makes the difference. Now, every single person that has gone to CIT, when they've gotten a job with a good company and they have time to kill because they didn't get the joining date, guess what they ended up doing? But we please come and spend some time at an NCDU. Of course, we left them. 
they would come here, hang out, because they felt they were learning a lot, and they certainly were. And these are the kinds of opportunities that we get. Right? Most importantly, the student will gain the confidence to adapt to any situation. That is really what the real world is looking for. The ability to learn. The brief history is that we've been doing separate colleges since 2009. 2008, the first teacher training program, 2009 onwards, and uh, we began implementation right in the colleges, starting from Umaram, yes, Krishna College, Maradam, several others, and graduated students have placed in top companies like TCS, Infosys, uh, and all of the above that you see them there. Over 5,000 students. Again, this is the course breakup. So individually, it's competition, changing, open to all branches, including the first years. The duration is for 20 hours. Java basics, then you have data structures and advanced Java, and all of these three things would if the student from second year on. For the most part, people that have taken it have completed this in their second year. Okay. So also note that this project has been subsidized by DIT, the Department of Electronics and IT in the government and the Ministry of IT. And because of that, all the teachers that got trained got trained for free because that was a sponsored project. And all the students paid a very nominal fee. And you can see the fees for these certifications as of now. And these are valid till March 20th. So right after this, which is the orientation to you, students. You can ask questions if you have any. We hope that you will just register. Registration will make you eligible for this price that is here, which is a subsidized price, because by March 21st, we will close out this. And April 1st onwards, uh, there will be a different uh, price. This is if you want to do it in a package way. This is how it is, phase one and phase two. This is how typically the students have taken it. Each phase, you would do it semester. Because it's 80 hours, you were doing it outside the curriculum, and you can manage to do it. And if you don't, you can always spend some time in the summertime and complete it full time. That's even better. Because summer is coming up right now, it's a good opportunity for you to do it. And you can also spend some time at Triple IT, and we can help you there as well. So these are the benefits: the participation in weekly industry talks, which happen in the same way through AVU. Many of the people they have taken advantage of us offering projects and internships at Triple IT. There's also opportunity for student mentorship. So instead of the teachers just mentoring the students, you get to also mentor your juniors when they are doing their CIT program, because now you've already done it. And this is probably the single most important thing that the industry looks for. Are you a good mentor? And if you start developing these qualities right in college, you're way ahead of the game. Then you're also eligible to attend many other workshops and conferences and other events that we hold at IIIT. Also, we have a special that we're doing now that the top 40 or maybe 80 that have undergone what we call mastery learning would be then made eligible for a special workshop that would be given 
by an industry expert who partners with us in developing this course as well. Okay. So they would also say, what does it mean you know, to think about relationships between the course that you're doing and the real life problems that you get to solve, et cetera, et cetera, and also help you with questions that have to do with placement. So, what are the next steps? You can register yourself for the CIT program and complete the payment before 21st of March. And that would make you eligible for taking up both phase one and phase two. Because come April 1st, once the subsidy of this project is gone, then it would just have a higher price. Okay. As we said, the CIT certification even then would be subsidized because we're not thinking of like quote unquote minting money on this. But it would be for 80 plus 80 hours, and that's 160 hours. Those four courses that we talked about, that would be around 10,000. Okay. So now you'll be getting it for 1,500 plus 1,500, that's 3,000. So it's a good deal. I'm going to flash that back to you again. You can take up the individual courses or the phases. I'll stop there. And the other thing I want to say is that we have worked with the IT Association for AP, the Earthwild Hyderabad Software Exporters Association, and working with all their industries in making them help you with getting jobs. So CIT is an important part. and. Those that have had CID certification, many of the industry have pretty much directly given people jobs. So again, the top 40 uh, to 80, I was meaning by top 5 to 10 percent of this batch that will be eligible for this special workshop. It would be a three to four day intensive workshop that we will have given by industry. Okay? So at this point, any questions? I'll stop. So the way you can have questions is by doing a hand raise or putting questions on the chat window. This is also another key way that someone knows whether or not this has been making sense to you or are you completely indifferent. And that's also a test of communicating effectively on the job. The speed with which you absorb things and you ask questions get answers, and move on. In all these years, I've traveled to each one of these colleges. Maybe I've traveled to more than 50 colleges. Talked to hundreds of uh, teachers at a time, thousands of students. Every single time I ask, are there questions? For a few minutes, there's a complete freeze. So there's a question uh, from VNR Vignan Jyoti. What are the faculty benefits? Thank you so much for asking that question. So we talked about mentors that are getting trained in this process by learning by doing, and then they are helping the students. So Part of the money that is taken in and the form of fees goes towards supporting the mentors. And 
this is small fee that's being collected. So so let me go off and, and show you. So in this fee, so this is the basic fee that is being collected, a small fee. And this is primarily for the team at NNCDU to be able to offer assessment and final assessment and then be able to certify the students. So this is what it is. And out of this, a portion will be given to faculty. And going forward, once uh, starting April 1st, a larger amount would be collected for the same because the benefits are there and it would be still better value than a lot of the things that are out there in the marketplace and then the faculty would get the benefits from that as well. So about you can say that a third of the amount here Note that the faculty will get the benefit, two benefits that are there for faculty. First of all, if they are doing the learning by doing approach, they are growing by themselves. And that is actually the biggest learning of all and the biggest benefit of all. Okay? Because now you're actually catapulting yourself from being, you know, a teacher who just sort of drags yourself to be teaching the students, lecturing, to learning the new ways, and also adopting the new technologies. Being able to be getting many more workshops and also many of our faculty members avail other programs that we offer. I can cite an example of our own Vishnu College professor who came in 2009 for a program and a couple of weeks back we have held a workshop, instructional design workshop for e-content development. And guess what? He traveled 400 kilometers from Bhimvaram to be here. And not only did he undergo the training, but he went back and trained many more faculty over there and sent back pictures all in less than a week. So you can see that this teacher is a leader. And they are going to go places. And they set their own terms. And they will get their own promotion. Some small monetary benefits will also come from the fees that we collect because we will share it with the mentors. But that's a very small thing compared with the bigger benefits that you get doing all of the above. How is it useful for non-circuit branches? So I don't know what is a non-circuit branch. Do you mean to say that how is it relevant for not computer science, not IT branches? Is that the question? Mechanical. Okay. So, let me explain that the teacher training program is undergone by faculty of primarily computer science or IT because they already have the fundamentals for these courses. However, for students, no matter what branch they're in, it will be beneficial because IT is all pervasive. Today, if a mechanical engineer has to use programs like an MCAD program or a civil engineer has to use an AutoCAD program or something and they have to be tech savvy or they are now in the industry and they have to design something, they need to be able to talk to a computer science person and say, why don't you build me this? 
And if they do not have any clue about data structures or object oriented or the logical thinking process in IT, they will not even know where to start. And therefore, by definition, they are going to place themselves behind all the people who are arming themselves with the IT advantage. Do I make myself clear? The people who ask the question about the mechanical engineering, do they or don't they require this? I can speak for myself as an ECE person. So I could say, why do I care about IT? I did happen to take just two courses in my master's at the University of Iowa. That was programming and compilers. And that changed the way I went forward. I became an EDA, electronic and design automation. I built simulators for simulating how circuits work. The same way, think about if you build a model of a mechanical model of a car, of anything that you build. If you want to simulate it or if you want to change some parameters and you want to redo the soft version, you don't breadboard these things anymore, do you? You can't build part. You have to verify it works in the model, in software, before you build it. Because it's way too expensive to build it. And then rebuild it. And keep building it. And by which time, you're out of business. Are you guys doing it? More questions? I think these are very important questions and relevant for everyone. Okay, good. More questions? Questions from the students? DVRIT, your students are really quiet. When I was visiting your institute, and you asked a lot of questions. So I know that you are not quiet. Just need to wake up and ask questions. And a lot of times in the industry, there is no time to wake up. You've got to be moving. You've got to be doing. You've got to be asking. You've got to be answering all at once. You can't have too much of startup time. You need to get in gear, get in first gear, move to second, move to third, and be in your fourth gear and moving. Because otherwise, industry will say, you, my dear friends, are not employable. Questions? I really want to hear from you. Are there teachers out there too? What about Vignan? Other than Java and data structures, are there any other concepts? There's another question here. It's an interesting question. Really not about Java. It's, it's about thinking object oriented and following a process of learning by doing when learning a particular technology. And the example in the case in point happens to be Java. Right? So it's like this. Then you ask, whether the food is cooked, do you need to cook, eat all the rice before you figure out whether it's cooked or a little bit is enough? So by learning it in this way, what we have found, and we've got feedback from lots and lots of teachers and students, and you can see these uh, things in the website as well, you know, the testimonials and so on, is that 
the connection is being made between real life problems and the concept. Right? That is the key. And data structure is a huge thing. Now, there's going to be some questions actually that we will ask the students and we'll see if you can respond after having completed your data structures course, right? The most important thing in all of this is being able to look at not data structures, the way it's being done in the curriculum today, but doing it differently. It's all about what you see in the screen. Let me see this other question. Um, is there any change in the registration process? Should we follow the same old procedure, uh, namely the screening test? No. We do not follow the same old procedure because this is a one-time opportunity for you to sign up. Uh, there are no restrictions. Anybody can sign up and they have to register themselves in the next couple of days, preferably and then complete the payment before so that it reaches here and NNPU by March 21st. These are the only two conditions and the opportunity is for them to go through both self-paced self as well as mentor-based so that they can be more than the 1 is to 10 numbers of students signing up. Also, even though they may register now, they may start later. But because there is a deadline and there is a, a price break right now, we are recommending that the registration take place so that you can get the benefit of this for your students. Is it clear? Okay, please ask your question. Yes, Vignan, what is your question? Is it possible to extend the date of payment? Today is, what is the date today? The 6th. Six. Six. So we have about two weeks now, no? What is the date you are looking for? as we are expecting the first year students. By when are you expecting the first year students to take up? We have one more orientation next week, right, on 13th. Would they be able to attend that orientation? Okay, they are busy with the exams and internals. When will they be done? No. Uh, I'm afraid uh, we, we, in the time in the month of July 1st, they can always begin to do implement the program in July first week. All we are asking right now is that they participate in the orientation and we can always try and set up a time for orientation if they are not able to attend this 13th orientation. So there may be few colleges who are not able to make it. We have been doing some requests so we can schedule another orientation possibly in again within two weeks time and we should try and get the registration to be completed and once they know the benefits and everything they will be able to sign up because April 1st is the hard deadline by which the project is closed so that we have any period. So 
what I suggest? Yes, we are conducting orientation on such things. Okay, very good. Will the first years be able to attend then? Will your first year students be able to attend? Okay, excellent. Then there you go. What we recommend is that they can simply register themselves right away. So they go to the online registration. Right away, let them complete it in the following week itself and complete the payment. And in July, they can start doing the implementation if that's when they are free. Is it okay? Any other questions? One of the things I want to say is that, thank you Vignan, this kind of approach of mapping real problems to programs, we have found that the faculty have benefited a huge amount. And if there are other faculty that are here that haven't participated in the CIT program, we should consider the TTP because this is actually getting you way ahead of the game by mapping real life problems to programs, being able to teach even other subjects that you do a lot differently, being able to be more communicative on the job and actually bringing out the leader within you. I can tell uniformly whether it is teacher or student they are gaining the confidence to adapt to any situation. They are able to quickly respond to things, which is the key. And having lived and worked in lots of places across the world, you know, in the Bay Area, in Texas, in Austin, in Boston, in Hyderabad, in Iowa, in Dallas, what I have seen uniformly is that Culturally, we hesitate to ask the question. We have a question in our, inside us. We think, oh, what are the friends going to think? What are they going to think if I ask the question? Maybe it's a silly question. Maybe it's a stupid question. Whatever. So many things are going on within the person. It's really a hard life, I tell you. I want that you get out of that. I, you know, I truly recommend that you take CIT because I think it will be beneficial to you. But whether or not take CIT, I seriously encourage you to work on being more communicative. Ask your questions. Try not to keep it within you and hope that someday you will get an answer because you will not. These questions will keep piling up and piling up and piling up till you burst. Don't wait for that day. In fact, the word waiting is taken out of the dictionary of finance PDU. And the same is true for every member that touches and feels and hands. They are a member of life. So we have people, students like yourselves, faculty like yourselves, who walk in this space and they come to Hyderabad or when they come to the story, they come and hang out here and then they take advantage of many things. They are doing collaborative research projects. They have done uh, plugins for the open source. They have done open source projects. They have done various kinds of wonderful things. Done wiki workshops, short workshops, long workshops, many other things that they have taken advantage of. And these are some of the things that are there. The most important thing is that you need to be able to adapt to new technologies. You need to be able to work in the real life. And this is the key. And if you are not able to do that, my dear, you, by NASCOM definition, are unemployable. 
and I do not want to mince my words. I like to call a stick a stick, a spade a spade, and an unemployable student as an unemployable student. Try not to be one. Other questions? Any other questions? So VNR, Vignan, any questions from BVRIT? Padmasri Biviraju, were you able to participate? Were you able to hear? Can you please acknowledge? Do you have students sitting there? I'm looking for either a question or a comment from BVRIT. So I know VNR doesn't have students today. Uh, and I know that you plan to do that next week. I was asking for B.V. Raju. So you have faculty there at VNR who are sitting over there? That's a good opportunity because now that's why I got all the faculty. Yes, B.V. Raju. Go ahead. Can you give some real-time examples? Sure. Okay. So, when you do data structures, who are the students that are sitting there, actually? Uh, what year? What students? Second year, first year, third year? Can you just share that, Bibi Raju? Can you tell me now? So, let's take an example, not from the computer science, because computer science and IT are really horizontal. They are used by every branch. This is what we talk about, right? So, let us say I am an ECE student and I have joined a company. Okay. So, let us say I am a electronics student, right? Now, I will be learning about circuits. I will be learning about designing with them. And I will be learning about how to put parts in a breadboard, etc. But if I have to build a real system, I need to be able to understand how the thing works. So imagine if I draw a circuit diagram and if it has only 15 gates, I can easily trace it and see how it is working. Right? I can do it on paper. Suppose I have 100 gates. Can I do it still on paper? It takes a little more time, but yes, I can do it. Suppose I have a thousand gates. Okay, you need a big sheet of paper, but maybe you can struggle through and still do it. But imagine if you have, uh, you know, 50 inputs and you are giving all kinds of variation, you are going to struggle with that. Imagine if you have a million gates. Now, what if I said, can you? Build a model of your design in software and simulate the functionality. I maintain that an ECE person, if they do object-oriented programming with Java and data structures, they will be able to build a model of this in software and they'll be able to communicate how it should be done and this is the kind of thing that's necessary for the today's ECE engineer. Okay. Is that clear?
Now, take the example of any program, like for example, the way we do search engine. Normally in a data structure course, you do stacks and trees and queues and so on and so forth. You have simple concepts and then some simple application that goes with the concept, but you're not combining concepts or you are not creating a compound prop that uses multiple concepts. Again, in which context do you use what particular thing? Do you know what is the data structures used by Facebook? Do you know what is the data structures used in your phone? Which holds addresses? Well, those, my dear friends, are real-time examples. And you need to be able to think on these things because there are software engineers sitting on the other side building these things. Right? Once you get into this mode of thinking and learning by doing, you will be able to be build your confidence to ask questions, talk to people, discuss dialogue, and get solutions. Because now you'll start seeing, oh, this is how I connect a real-world problem with the program, a concept that I learned through the connection. I hope that helps. Diviraju, does that answer your question? And I do hope that this question was asked by a student. So that is my expectation, that they're thinking on those lines. Great. Great. Well, I'm glad you think that they're good examples. Now here's a challenge for you faculty and students to start examining what are those data structures. Because it's not about learning about concepts of data structures, but it's about applying them to the real world problem. And that is what is the real gap that industry is observing. And this is what we're talking about, trying to map and make that connect. Great. I hope all of you colleges, students, and faculty alike were able to get all your questions answered and that the students are also convinced that they have to do some learning by doing because I can may tell you that if you do not do learning by doing, this is what's going to happen, right? I hear, I forget. I listen to the lecture, I forget. I see something, I remember. I do, I understand. Do learning by doing, then it will, you will remember it. That will be like tight Velcro. It will stick in your memory with multiple hooks, and that will stay with you. That's the learning that will stay with you. Otherwise, you just get good grades in your exam, but that doesn't help you at all because the learning is not staying. I hear and I forget is what happens. So I hope all of you students, I thank you for your time and attention for participating in this orientation of what we are considering as step, the certificate in IT. 
Student Enhancement Program. This has been truly successful in its approach and myself and my team at NNCDU and all the partner colleges, they have been great to collaborate and work and we hope that more of the students can get the benefit and bridge the gap that the industry can become more employed. Thank you for your time. Do register. And those of you that have questions, to your mentors, please contact an MCDU, clarify, and complete the registration process. Because those are hard deadlines for March 21st date. So the project is coming to a close. We would like you to get the benefit. Okay? So if there are no other questions, I will be signing off. One last time, any other questions? I'm just looking at the question of the time. I just want to also add that make very good use your time as a college student because then you will truly be getting the best out of your college education. It's the time to learn, it's the time to stand, it's the time to do and learn. So, Bibi Raju, you'd, you'd like to uh, ask a question? Okay, you have the mic. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Okay. Yes, I can hear good you. Afternoon. Good afternoon. I can see you all. I can see I can see Jagan there relaxing away. Hello? Yes, and the students. Yes. Please go ahead with your question. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon to you, sir. Please go ahead. You have the mic. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Huh. Madam, your voice is breaking because I am not getting anything there. Uh, I am not speaking because I have given you the mic and I am looking forward. Ah, your voice is not continuous. Okay, are you able to hear me now? Shall I type my question, Madam? Uh, please type your... I can hear you very well, so you can ask your question. Yes. Go ahead and ask your question, sir. Okay, it's a very good question. Where do we get exposure for the subjects which are not having lab sessions in the curriculum? It's an excellent question, sir. In fact, one of the goals that I have been proceeding, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Because I am proposing to respond to that question. If you all can hear me, just type yes. Yeah, yeah, I will type it, madam. Whatever the doubt I am having, I will be typing. Okay. 
I've got the uh, question here. Where do we get exposure for subjects? Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Which are not having lab sessions in the curriculum. So, the real problem starts because we are lecturing. Right? And... Ah, yes, ma'am. And what are the students doing? They are taking home homework. And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. And okay. there is no real way of... So, teaching. how do the students... In yes. So, my question to you is, is there a different way to teach in the classroom? In fact, this is another area which we are also doing research in. And we will share these approaches with you as well, called the Fogel approach and so on. Here we are coming up with ideas of how to get students exposure for subjects which are not having lab sessions in the curriculum, so that we can flip the classroom and we can make it activity based and especially where the concepts are difficult, and these are threshold concepts, we can help with the learning. Computer organization, there is no lab. I understand. There are a lot of things which are supposed to have lab, but they don't. But can the teacher change the approach of teaching? So this is another area which we are working on to help the teachers is how can they make the subject learnable. Even software engineering, I understand, is being treated as a theory subject. To me, a software engineering cannot be a theory subject. It is the most practical subject. And if people are not doing a project and following all the steps that are required in software engineering, to me, they haven't done anything. And for computer organizations, the kind of questions I would ask them is, what do you understand? by pipelining. And we can even do a simple thing by giving a task in the class, right? We can give a task and we can see different groups how they do it. So that they understand things like the key concepts that are done in computer organization. So there are ways in which we can help and this is something which we call the teacher training which we will continue to do and which you can avail in your FDP program for how do you make subjects come alive for students that do not have lab sessions. A way to engage with that is take the theory class and make it activity based. Not every session needs to be like that. But one out of four sessions can be like this. And we can share how to do it specifically so that you can get some structured output as opposed to randomly doing something. Is it clear? In a lot of subjects that we have also developed a lot of e-content, including we have created content in the instructional design called butterfly model so that the people are getting the idea if they have different learning styles or they are having different learner abilities, they are still able to go through this. So this is how it is. And where they do not have lab sessions, there are lots of different ways of using different methodologies to make a theory class different from lecture. Great. In fact, recently in our workshop on instructional design which we held in partnership with British Council, we have had this same topic taken up. And uh, I'm not sure that I think a couple of teachers may have participated from DVR. Uh, I know that from Krishna College in Dreamvaram they have come. So we'll keep discussing on this as well, how to do it.
of life. So it's a constant process of teacher training, passing on the knowledge to students and we keep on enhancing and raising the bar for the teachers and for the students. Because we cannot remain static. It's like a running bus, right? If you are walking, you cannot catch it. You have to keep running in order to be able to jump on. And technology is moving fast. There are the subjects, the way they are being taught, are stuck. We are keeping on adding more subjects, making the jobs of the teachers more difficult and for the students. How to make it so that the students actually learn? So this is one of them. Learn by doing. And we can see how to explore these. Hope that helps. Any other questions? The BBRIC, did that help with your question? Okay, thank you. So you still have the mic, BVR. So I have a very high regard for each of these colleges that are doing a lot of good work in their colleges and the management that are very supportive for introducing the new methodologies and supporting the students to become more employable and giving them all these opportunities. So, keep up the good work and thank you for participating in this orientation session. If there are no other questions, we will call this session closed. And you can simply acknowledge in your chat window if there are no other questions. Thank you very much. I'm uh, very glad to see your uh, full auditorium at uh, BV Raju. So, all the best to all of you. Thank you all for participating. Good day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vignan, for participating. Hope this session was useful and helpful.